Another week and another disastrous performance by Labor trying to sell this radical voice proposal as moderate. Anthony Albanese has had a very easy time in the media with most outlets actively campaigning for a voice. The Guardian has even turned the referendum into an opportunity to bank some cash by publishing content pushing the voice. Sophie Ellsworth from The Australian reports, The Guardian Australia has published numerous stories relating to Indigenous Australians and the upcoming voice referendum with the support of a philanthropic sponsor who is publicly backing and financially helping the Yes campaign. So much for that fiercely independent journalism The Guardian always talks about when it begs readers for money. Now, this week, instead of getting a soft ride in the media, Albanese ran straight into a brick wall during an interview with Ben Fordham. I make through. this point because I know where you're reading from. You're reading from the no pamphlet. I, I, I'm, no, I'm uh, not reading. Excuse me, Prime Minister. Well, that's I'm in the not no pamphlet. reading. Excuse me. Well, that quote I'm is in not the no reading, pamphlet. Excuse me. Well, it is. I am not reading from the no pamphlet. I'm reading from my own questions that I have written. No, I'm, I'm on a flow well, here. Well, when I'm you finish... A, you've, just, you've just accused me of reading from a pamphlet. No, I reading no, from. I didn't. So I said me... those quotes are from the no pamphlet, which they All are. Right. Well, get because on board, guess Ben. Guess what? Guess what? You're in a position to make a difference and for, to help it succeed, as are other people in the media. By talking about what it's about, not by raising things that are, are not going to be relevant, Albanese is so used to doing easy interviews with hardly any pushback against his proposals that he greeted Fordham's questions with anger. It showed the contempt voice proponents have for scrutiny and transparency. Albanese even had the audacity to suggest that Fordham was being immoral for asking tough questions. It is not the journalist's job to promote a policy particularly a bad policy lacking in detail, which has sweeping ramifications for all Australians for generations to come. And that wasn't even the weirdest thing about Albanese's interview. Watch the moment he tells Fordham that he will just tell The Voice no if he doesn't like what they have to say. What if The Voice says, after dealing with health and education and the justice system, what if 12 months down the track, The Voice says, we want to change the date of Australia Day? What do you say as Prime Minister? What, what we say is that we have no plans to no, change, what, uh, to change to Australia them? Day. You'll we say, no? we say we have no plans, absolutely. And what, what's made but, but clear, But you'll say ben, to The Voice, no? Of course we will. If we don't agree with them, of course we will. Truly absurd stuff. Australians should listen to the voice, but Albanese doesn't need to listen to the voice when he disagrees. In other words, what a complete waste of time this whole thing is. And Fordham rightly pointed out another issue with Labor's plan. Our Prime Minister has been on the record before saying he supports the Uluru Statement from the Heart in full. That statement clearly also calls for a treaty to be implemented, but Albanese dodged the question. As part of the Uluru Statement, we have a voice, we have treaty, we have truth-telling. As part of a treaty, won't there be compensation? If there is, I mean, that's not totally unexpected. This isn't about a treaty, Ben. But there are three parts of the Uluru is, Statement. Yeah, and this is so not, you're talking this about is the not about a treaty. But as part of treaty, which we this guess is, will be a following step... This is not about a treaty. Do you foresee that compensation would be this paid? This is not about a treaty. But and people, people want to know, can, can will I make compensation one point? be paid? Can I make one point? No. Ben, I, I can't say it any clearer. Okay. Compensation is a, it has nothing to do with what people will vote on in the last quarter of this year. No, I'm talking and about after I, and that. Can, and can I make that... Well, they're not voting on any of that uh, No, I was just year. saying there are three stages. So can after we go through the voice... Is it natural to assume that as part of treaty... No, no it's not natural so, so to, to go wrong? through all the hypotheticals. I'm talking about what is on the agenda the Voice campaign is not failing because journalists are asking tough questions. It needs to be strong enough a proposal to withstand a barrage of questions, even from the most sceptical of Australians. Until Albanese understands that point, he will continue to clash with mainstream journalists and no amount of help from the rabble of lefty activists at The Guardian or the ABC will save him. Well, joining me tonight on this panel is Sky News host Caroline DeRusso and Tim Blair from The Daily Telegraph. Tim, why don't we start with you? Thanks for joining us. What did you no make problem. of that, that interview uh, on 2GB? 
But Ben Fordham's done a terrific job almost from the outset on this whole issue. I remember fairly early on in the whole uh, voice debate, he asked a, a, a brilliant question that not, it hadn't occurred to anyone at that point, which was, where's the voice going to be? Like, physically, where are people going to sit? What's, what's it going to, you know, where's it going to be located? And the intelligentsia, by which I mean the not very intelligentsia on Twitter, all kind of laughed and snickered at this. But it's a vital question. It's, we're talking about a lot of money here, potentially, for a lot of representatives, a lot of the representative staffs. So the idea of where they're going to locate it is crucial. By the way, my suggestion for where they should locate it is in Mulcania, New South Wales, so that um, they can just open the window from time to time to see if things are improving. Well said. Caroline, obviously uh, there were a, a lot of conjecture that there was misinformation from both sides uh, of that interview. What did you make of, of this attempt uh, by the Labor camp to suggest that Ben Fordham was reading from the No pamphlet when he, he clearly wasn't? They were his own independent questions, but also that the substance of the questions were false. Well, they need to be framed as being false uh, to be able to protect the other narrative. And see, this is the thing with, with any of our ideas. It's very easily easy to be enamoured by your own views. Um, and, and human nature suggests that we generally are. The thing is, is when you are having something uh, like a referendum and you've got two sides of the argument, there's a lot of pressure testing of ideas. Um, so if you... Uh, Perhaps, perhaps Labor are not particularly um, sure that their ideas actually stand up to scrutiny and that's why they try to redirect and, and distract from the substance um, of, of other people's arguments. Because if you can take the credibility out of the argument without dealing with the substance of the argument, that there is the easiest way um, to discredit whatever, um, whatever the question is. So I think that that there is essentially the plan. That's why anything that isn't on board with the voice is considered misinformation or disinformation. Uh, because in this case, if you don't agree with the government, you are a bad person. Yeah, Tim, it's it's such a good point, isn't it? Do <laughs> yes. you think do you think that this tactic is working? I think that Albanese should be trying to steel man his proposal, make it as strong mm. as possible. And yeah. I just feel when he attempts to to shoo shoo questions away from a point of morality, it it won't work. Oh, absolutely. We're seeing in the polls that it's not working, and uh, word of mouth, probably more in, important than the polls, uh, is also trending towards no. Uh, it's it's intriguing how we're watching. Um, what the Daily Telegraph has observed uh, a kind of a repeat of history here. The the Republic debate fell apart because Republicans couldn't agree on a model. They couldn't agree what the Republic would be. Now we've got a circumstance where the voice proponents can't tell you, or they can tell you, but they just argue amongst themselves, the voice is about the treaty, the voice is about reparations, the voice is about etc. And then you've got the Prime Minister saying, no, 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 the voice isn't about that. I can say no to the voice on that. And, and which voice are they talking about? It's, I mean, we, we had from the start a lot of people saying, why is it called just the voice, but it represents a plurality of people, of individuals? Well, they can't even agree amongst themselves now uh, on what the voice actually is. Yeah, and uh, apparently Albanese will just say no if he doesn't like what they have to say. It doesn't seem very receptive to me. It seems against the whole the spirit He's of the He's a no-voter. Yeah, exactly. 